Welcome back everybody. Getting ready to, to pull the PVC seal. It's going to take 20 of those little pieces of carbon felt coated in nickel and 20 of these little coil things. The best way to wind these coil is on a step drill and a pair of vice grips. Attach a piece of wire here and just go down the number of turns. In this case it's down here. I've made 40 because I got to make two sides. So I have 20 little um, coil pieces all of this size that sit on top of the pads. And then the active material goes in on that and then the next pad compresses everything. Okay, welcome back. I've got some time to make this um, PVC drilled nickel iron battery cell. So it's got 14 layers. We've got 14 little wires. Each layer is made up of a carbon felt coated in nickel. And then I have 0.5 grams of nickel hydroxide on top one of these little coil contacts then goes down into the tube, rests on it and I layer it up like that. I'm using nails as pins to hold the retainer back so I can compress it because we don't need a lot of compression as well. So you don't want to really crush the felt, you just want to make enough contact to this wire and the nickel hydroxide. A few taps. So each layer has 0.5 grams of nickel hydroxide. And once I pegged it and compressed it a bit, it compressed down to yay much this time. I could go more, but I don't need to. It seems to be firm. I've tapped it and 1.3 grams of nickel hydroxide actually for spillage came out of the whole cell. So I just have to make the iron side. I'm not going to use any iron particles, just um, Fe304, lay it up. So I'll get back when I make that one. <clears throat> okay, the iron side's done. It turns out you can get 20 layers by um, compressing it with a little a smaller bar than the diameter of that and putting a pin through there after every four layers and you work your way up and you can actually pack 20 of them. I got 10 wires on that side and 10 wires on this side. I made two grooves, so the wires, because the diameter of the wires start to get large. So that's both of them done. So that's only got four, 14 layers which I should have um, thought of the pin idea back then. So getting ready. So I'll um, attach these to the lid. I'm going to have a lid on this one. Stop the electrolyte coming out and everything. This one, the layer levels right up to here. In the documentation for nickel iron batteries, it says the um, negative side, the iron side has to be larger than the positive anyway. So it might be good having 20 there and only 14 on this side. And I've got 0.7 grams of um, Fe304 per layer. Instead of the 0.5 originally in the other cell over there. All right, so I've got to mix up some electrolyte, attach these to the lids. Um, I'll feed the wires through. I reckon, not rely on this, that's just there to compress it a bit. And don't forget, you don't want to compress them too much, you just want them nice and firm. A slight compression, but not a great lot to compress, you want the electrolyte to flow, be able to go in between the um, carbon. Yeah, I'll get back when I settle this up sometime.
two cells are assembled now. I've decided to go with the um, connection onto the bolt as the um, contact point for the cell. So all the little um, wire contacts go into here, soldered in. Not sure if I should grease it or not. They'll clamp to the underside of the lid. I'll bolt through those two holes. And to seal the two holes, the piece of rubber from the roofing screw can fit over there nicely. And then the other nut can hold it all down through the lid. So that's the iron one that has 20 layers. That's the nickel one that has um, 14 layers of felt pads. And the container for it. The electrolyte level will be here, which is about five mil under that little breathing spout and fill up hole. We'll have to pretty long, so, so nothing can come out. Hopefully. So let's see if it leaks up through here and comes through the rubber seal. I've had um, potassium hydroxide of eight mole in one of these. So it works, holds it good. No staining of the sides. Okay, so I'll um, assemble all this. And we'll do a resistance test, but sort of because these in here, all the way through each layer, Mm, it's going to be pretty low resistance anyway. Resistance test on the nickel cell. 0.4 ohms. Two probes tucked together and 0.2. And for the iron side. Point eight, point nine, point seven. A little rubber grommet works fine. Looks like it will be sealing good. Okay, battery's all set up and ready to go. It's in five mole of potassium hydroxide. And if you can see, there's like a slight little clear layer just above that mark, you'll see like a clear looking area. That's the mineral oil to stop the CO2 from getting in. So we're totally sealed up now. Hopefully that's high enough so it doesn't bubble out. It hasn't had a charge and the voltage is zero because it thinks the negative cell is the positive, which it is the iron one, because I have a little eye marked on that cell right there, that black line. So it probably needs a charge, but I'm going to let it soak overnight before I charge it, so it can fully wet, because the um, carbon felt is a bit hydrophobic. The cell just had a five minute charge and it's running 50 milliamps at 1.4 volts. Hmm, could be promising. Shouldn't run for long because, I and mean, we probably shouldn't drain it like this. It's only just had five minutes worth of charging and hasn't been in the liquid for more than half hour. Nah. Not even half hour, 15 minutes. Oh, I'll have to wait till tomorrow to charge it up properly. Next day, after soaking overnight, it's first charge, it's on 1.6 volts, drawing 300 milliamps. And it somewhat bubbles a bit, as you can see. Uh, 
I'd actually like to get like a tinge of iron, rusty colour happening. <clears throat> I'll charge it up for most of the day and um, I'll get back with the first charge. First six hour charge for the cell. So it's been charged up. We're uh, sitting at 1.5 volts. The um, test load is 50 milliamps and the cutoff voltage is 0.9. milliamps 1.5 I'll get back 39 minutes for the run six hours on charge average voltage is 1.36 33 milliamp hours and 46 milliwatts. So on the other cell, the first run was only, they both had the same load, 50 milliamps. It was charged for 510, ran for 19 minutes, 16 milliwatt hours, milliamp hours and 21 milliwatt hours. So it's a more of an improvement due to having more layers but it's the first charge, so it's going to take like 20 started picking up. Okay, doing a little update, I'm going to post a video. Um, the cell must have cracked somehow. See the little crack marks? I can't see how, because the cell never reaches more than the ambient temperature outside. See the little crazy crack coming around? Must have been, this is too tight, the bolt perhaps on that rubber, and they split it. So we're at, the charge now is number 11. So the first charge was six hours, ran for 39 minutes and 33 milliamp hours and 46 milliwatt hours and it slowly increases to 92 127 milliwatt hours still going up the highest one was five hour charge ran for five hours and four minutes but on 30 milliamps all the rest have been 50 milliamp loads because that's just too long of a day so nickel hydroxide side has 14 layers at 0.5 grams each layer. So that's seven grams of nickel hydroxide. And for the iron cell has 20 layers at 0.7 grams. So 14 grams of Fe304. And the last run yesterday got 190 milliwatt hours at a 50 milliamp load. You can see the um, iron in the cell. It's a yellowy looking color. It's building up on top of the um, mineral oil. I don't think that's a problem. Uh, I thought the nails might rust, but I think the um, mineral oil is protecting them. I haven't lost much liquid. It's been like 40 degree days. And there's the line, I haven't topped it up yet and it's just still at the same level. So the mineral oil also is helping the liquid stay in the jar. So I'll unpost this because it seems to be working pretty well. And um, I'll continue charging. Thanks for watching.